Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of C++ Data Structures. My name is Nick, and today we're going to continue our look into algorithms in C++, this time looking at bubble sort. So last time we looked at uh, the selection sort algorithm, and the way that worked was we would build up this sorted sublist uh, sub starting from the smallest elements in the list and putting that sorted sublist on the, uh, uh, the lower indices of the array. And then we would have the larger ones uh, uh, at the right side of the array. And we'd build it up starting from the left to the right, uh, going basically from lower to higher. Now, uh, in the case of bubble sort, things are a little bit different. So we actually do it uh, in reverse. So what we do is instead of finding the smallest elements in the list first or the array first, we find the largest elements in the array. And the reason why it's called bubble sort is because uh, uh, on every single iteration of the loop, the larger elements uh, bubble to the top of the li uh, list, so to the larger indices in the list. And the way that they bubble is by this comparison between adjacent uh, array locations. So what we do is uh, we will compare to adjacent locations. We see if the left is larger than the right. If the left is larger than the right, we swap them. And so the larger one becomes uh, the right element in the list, so the larger index in the list. And we do that and we iterate over the list and eventually we get to the end of the list and the largest, the, the largest element will be at the end of the list. And so that element is sorted at that point. So we don't need to look at that last index anymore. So then every single time, instead of uh, iterating over every single position in the list, it gradually gets smaller and smaller, uh, the amount of lists that we have to uh, bubble values up from. Uh, similar to how in selection sort, uh, our sorted sublist uh, started from index zero, then index one. So instead of uh, looking through all the elements, we could start at uh, index one, then index two, then index three, index four, etc. And uh, so uh, as kind of a parallel to that, in bubble sort, we search from index zero to, or we bubble from index zero to index n minus one, then we go to n minus two, n minus three, until we only have one single element left in the list, and that is implicitly sorted, similar to how in selection sort the uh, last element in the list is uh, implicitly sorted. This time it's just the first element. So let's go ahead and look at the example. So here's bubble sort.cpp. We'll have a function again called swap that will just swap two places in memory, and that's what we'll use for this bubbling process. So we'll just swap two adjacent elements if a one is if the left is larger than the right. Okay, and then here's actually bubble sort. So inside of bubble sort, what we'll do is the same kind of n minus one uh, operations in this outer loop, and that's like I said. Uh, eventually, we'll end up with only one element left to find its right place. But that's, all, that's going to be the uh, zeroth element of the list, so the element at index zero. And because it's the only element left to sort, that means it's already sorted, so we don't need to do in iterations. So then, in this inner loop, that's where we actually do this propagation of largest values to the, uh, the latter indices of the list, to the largest, or to the section it belongs in. All right, so in the uh, zeroth iteration of this loop, we find the largest value. In the uh, uh, second, or in the, in the, sorry, in the zeroth iteration, we find the largest value. In the first iteration, we find the second largest value, uh, and so on and so forth. And so that's why we have this decreasing, uh, uh, that's why this comparison check gets smaller and smaller every single time we go through this outer loop. And it's because after we go through uh, the i equals zero iteration of this outer loop, uh, the last element is in place. We know that that's the largest element. So we don't need to search that anymore. So we'll decrease it by one every single time this outer loop ticks. Okay, and so then in this if statement, all we do is compare adjacent elements. So we just compare adjacent elements is the jth item in the list uh, greater than the j plus oneth item. So is the left greater than the right? And if so, we just do a swap. And then eventually, after we do all this, we'll end up with a sorted list. And we'll go ahead and print out at every step. So then in our main function, it's fairly simple. We'll just be sorting a list of seven items, and we'll also uh, initialize them with some random numbers between 0 and 100, and then we'll call bubble sort. So let's go ahead and quit that. 
and then let's uh, compile this. Here we go. And then let's run it. Okay, so let's start at the very top. Here we go. Okay, so we start out uh, very simply by looking index uh, 0 and 1. We see that the largest element is on the right. So uh, we actually don't do anything for uh, the first iteration of that inner loop. Now for the second iteration, we check index 1 and 2. And we find that 86 is bigger than 77. So we have to swap those two. And so then our list becomes, uh, the only change to the list is right here. So 86, 77 turns to 77, then 86. Then again, we compare the next two elements. So 86 and 15. And so we swap those. So 15 goes on the left now, 86 on the right. Uh, then we check uh, 3 and 4, right? So uh, 3 and 4 in this case would be 86 and 93. So there, we're fine. The largest element's on the right. So we skip 3 and 4, and then we go directly to swapping index 4 and 5. Uh, when we get there, we find that uh, 93 is larger than 35. So we swap them, so 93 goes on the right. And then finally, in the last iteration of that outer loop, we end up swapping 93 and 86. And so after we do that, the largest element in the list is at the very far right. So the next time we go through that outer loop, we don't need to check that last element, we just need to bubble up through this position where 86 is. Okay, so let's continue on. So then we start over. So starting at 0 and 1, now we swap 83 and 87, trying to move 83 up. So here's 83 now. Then we move it up again, so 15 gets shoved down in the list. 83 bubbles up. Then we check 83 and 86. 86 is larger, so we don't, uh, we don't do any swap there. So then we move over in the list and we check 86 and 35. So 86 is on the left, it's larger. Uh, so we move 35 over and swap it with 86. And so 86 moves up. Then uh, we check here. So we check 86 and 86, they're equal. So in this case, uh, we don't need to do any swapping. It would be redundant because they're the same value. We only care if it's greater. So we skip that and then 86 and 93 are in the correct order. So that's correct. So uh, that's going to, so now we have guaranteed that this element is correct. Now, this element happens to be correct. However, we only have guaranteed that this element is correct. And that's because we can't, you know, guarantee that we're going to have duplicates in the list. If this element was, in stay, uh, was instead uh, 85, we, the, the exact same pattern of execution would happen. Uh, but, you know, we can't guarantee uh, that this element is correct yet. So we have to go through another iteration. So again, we swap 77 and 15 because 77 is larger. Then uh, we, uh, we look at 77 and 83. 83 is larger, so we don't do any swap. We move over again. We look at 83 and 35, swap. And then uh, at this point, we check 83 and 86. That's correct. Uh, we don't need to swap. And then the rest of the, uh, these items are correct, guaranteed. So now this 86 is guaranteed. And this will continue on and on. And eventually, you know, as this list uh, on the right becomes more and more sorted, that sublist of the larger elements becomes more and more sorted, uh, the bottom will have fewer and fewer swaps because uh, the elements will start eventually getting put into their correct place. Like as you can see here, by this iteration, we already have the zeroth element in place by coincidence. So, uh, and then we already have uh, 77 in place over here. So we end up at the very uh, end, not doing many swaps after that. So that's going to do it for this episode of C++ Crash Course. This is bubble sort. Again, the basic idea is that on every iteration of the outer loop, um, we're just going to bubble up and find the next largest value in the list. So we find the largest, then the second largest, then the third largest, and we build our way until we have a, a sorted list starting from the smallest to the largest, but we build it from the right instead of the left. Okay, so as always, you can go to github.com slash coffee before arch 
to find all the repositories that I use in this series and many others such as the Python, the multiprocessor programming one, and the GPU programming one. So we looked at C++ data structures. All the uh, video links can be found here in the README as well as the files associated with those videos. My contact information if you have an idea for a video that you want to shoot me or you can comment of course. So we looked at bubble sort today. Feel free to download this, play around with it, you know, modify it as you wish. Uh, in later videos in another series uh, that we actually do algorithmic complexity in, we'll start plotting uh, how these algorithms do over different sized arrays uh, of different randomized inputs. And we'll see uh, how we can visualize algorithmic complexity. So as always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.